Okay, so I picked up this AOU 328 soldering vise from Banggood, and they sell a version of this with two uh, built-in power supply readouts. There's a voltage and a current readout, and you can adjust the power supply. There's some banana plugs on the end and the mains input, but it looks really, really nasty with the analog dials. So what I thought we'd do is get this, tear it down, and see if there's any space inside to fit one of these. So this is a little programmable uh, DC power supply. This particular one's a DP30V3A. There's a slightly better version out now, I think, which is called a DPS. For example, the DPS5005. Uh, there's an article on Hackaday about a bit of firmware called Open DPS for that to make the interface a lot better because the interface is quite clunky on this. But it doesn't look like this will support the open source firmware, so we'll, we'll just have to roll with this. So the device itself costs about 17 or 18 pounds. I got this one from Banggood. They're available all over the place. And you can adjust the spacing between the two jaws and just pop a board in, like this Raspberry Pi, and close it up. And then you're free to do your soldering and work on it quite easily. It's a lot better than using these helping hands because these things have an awful tendency to just fall over and never ever be in the right place and always be bent or loose or... This isn't the most expensive one in the world by any stretch of the imagination. But we'll do some mods to it and uh, take it apart and see what it looks like. So looking side on at this thing you should just be able to see here. There's a sandwich of three layers of aluminium. Uh, the middle one is slightly recessed between the other two so you can, you can wedge the board between them. You can see it a little bit better here. So the board just slots in between those those two pieces of aluminium. So they, they definitely use the same moulding for both. Uh, there might just be some different inserts they put in the injection moulding tooling. I don't know how well you can see that, but there's definitely some flow lines visible. You can just catch it there on the outside of this, and you can actually feel them as well. So it's not very well injection moulded, but it was £17. So having a look at the inside, you can see here where the, uh, the voltmeter and the ammeter would be seated. Um, there's this little bearing block for the screw. And the uh, bottom thumb wheel also comes out. I think you remove the screws from this side. So having a quick go with a hard drive magnet, it turns out this is actually magnetic. So it's, it's probably stainless steel rather than aluminium. I assume this is brass. It looks like brass. It's not magnetic, I can tell you that much. The plastic... I can't see any markings. I thought ABS, but it's it's not very rigid. So, this bit looks like it slides out, but... It's um, lodged in place by the keying of these things, so it looks like these two strips need removing, these screws need removing, and the whole thing will just pivot out, so let's give that a try. They need screws... oh, oh right, okay. It just sort of slides out like that. Right. So what did annoy me when I first got this is one seems to be screwed towards the um, middle a little more than the other. Which is super annoying. I'm going the wrong way. So we'll just rectify that. It's a left hand thread one end and a right hand thread on the other end. And there's a couple of fat flats uh, ground or cut onto this that the little thumb wheel locates onto. Uh, nothing at the other end. It's just a, just a plain face to bear against that little block insert. So we've got a hole cut out now that's a reasonably decent size for the panel meter. 
so that's just ready to snap in there. Um, I'm also going to put some binding posts up here, I think. Let's put this around. A couple of these pinched from an uh, old speaker, but I'll put a link in the description where you can get these from there, just called uh, 4mm banana plug sockets or binding posts. So we'll stick those in there. Just got to drill a couple of holes. So we've got our binding posts in now, and I'll just snap the power supply in. There we go, that looks pretty good actually. There was a little C from the C mark down there, but just with a bit of acetone and a cotton bud, that actually came off without uh, without damaging the plastic at all. So I, I don't think it is ABS if, um, if it's not touched by uh, acetone, it must be something else. So for power, I'm just gonna use a uh, DC jack, this is salvaged off an old CCTV camera, but I, once again I'll put a link in the description for one of these. Um, and I've opened up this little slot that was already on the back with the scalpel a bit more. We'll just stick that in there with some black hot glue. So you can see there from left to right we've got uh, Input positive, input negative, output negative, and output positive. So we're just going to wire up the connections we've just soldered into those. Okay, so it's uh, looking pretty good. Need to just whittle a little bit of material off the top of this uh, stainless steel bit so that the hole lines up there so we'll uh, do that with the Dremel I think so the vice is looking pretty decent now with the power supply and the banana terminals mounted the little uh, side strips temporarily back on but there's one more mod that I'd like to try I'm not sure whether it'll work yet so we'll just give it a go and find out. This is a 9 gram hobby servo. The way that they basically work is you power them and they're designed for radio controlled uh, planes and cars and things like that. You send a pulsed signal uh, down one of the wires and the uh, period between the pulses or rather the duty cycle of the pulses I think actually controls the angle of the servo so it can go from there round to there. And there's a mod that you can do to these to make them continuously spin. And we can use that to drive the jaws open and closed, because doing it with your hand is just so old fashioned. So this is quite a small screwdriver, I think it's a Phillips triple zero. So hopefully you can see in here, this is the, the white bite wires going to the motor, so you can just control that with DC for forwards and backwards, we don't actually need this uh, position control board. And then three other wires going to the pot, and that basically changes the resistance depending on the angle. So there's a feedback loop in this that you send it a certain number of pulses, it knows where to go, it knows where it is, and it applies voltage to the motor until it gets there and then stops. So we're going to bypass all of that and just have a switch to uh, flip the polarity to this motor to go up and down. It's a good job I took a picture of where all those gears went. So you can see on this gear, or at least I can, there's this little notch on it that um, probably catches on something inside to control how far around it spins. So I think we'll cut that off. And also the potentiometer can only turn around so far. So we need to gently push that out from the back, I think, to modify that. We could drill out the gears slightly so that they just rotate around on this when it does hit its limits. I think that might be a better option, depending what size drills I have. We don't want them to run out too much, so they'll have to be close. 
So the little pin on this potentiometer is 1.4 mil. So if we can find a 1.5 mil drill bit, that'll probably do quite nicely. So I found this 1.57 mil drill, which is about 16th of an inch, and um, we'll use that to drill them out. So uh, this smaller gear was already a clearance fit on the pot because we're only reading the uh, position of this top one. And uh, the drilled out top one rotates quite freely on it, so I think that's a success. And I'll just cut off that little knob there with some pliers, hopefully. And I might have to, might have to fettle it down with a scalpel. So first of all, there's this little fine tooth gear that engages with the spindle of the motor. And then this smaller one on the pot that engages with that gear we just put on. And then another one that goes on this spindle, it engages with the one on the pot. And then finally, this top one. Okay, that looks good. Let's try and try reassembling it. Right, and for the moment of truth, uh, I've just got two AA batteries and we'll give it a little try, see if it spins all the way around. Look at that result! And the other way should go the other way. So what I've done to join from the uh, servo to uh, this screw part, I've just filed a flat on the end of this, and I'm going to use one of these. It's a little uh, shaft coupler. It's about 6 or 7 mil ID. I'll pop a link in the description. I originally had this for a stepper motor, but it looked like it worked perfectly. So I cut the centre bit off of a servo horn, uh, the sort of little knobby bit in the middle, drilled the hole out, stuck it in there with a bit of super glue, and put a couple of the grub screws in to secure it in place. So I can pop the screw down the middle, and that will go on there. And then we can slide that on there and use the grub screw to secure that on that. So I've got the servo mounted up in here. I just used a couple of the scrap bits of cutaway plastic and some hot glue to mount that. And uh, I've added a push button and a uh, little two position toggle switch to change the direction. And I'll just post the schematic here for how I did that. Yeah, I've used a five volt regulator just to prevent the servo from getting cooked. If you put a high voltage into it, say 12 volts, the servo is probably not gonna last very long. So now I think we can pop the back on, stick some screws in, and we'll give it a try. So here we go, it's looking pretty good. Um, let's plug it into a 12 volt power supply and see what happens. So the programmable power supply is powered up. So in order to set up the power supply with this firmware on, <clears throat> you press the set button, and that'll take you onto voltage set. You can push the toggle switch in to go to the tens, push it in to go to the units, and let's say we want five volts. And then you can change the decimal if you want to. And then you can scroll down after pressing set again to current set. Push the button, and let's say we can set up 50 milliamps. Set that, and then just turn the output on. You can see it's going to constant voltage mode and the output's turned on. Bang on 5 volts, which is quite nice. And we can test the current in constant current mode as well. And getting on for half an amp, quite close. And here's my uh, push button switch and the toggle switch for controlling the motorised jaws. So you can push that down. And it's not the quietest thing in the world, but it's working. Beats doing it by hand. And you can flip the toggle switch and it will go the other way and open up again. 
So this has been how to modify an AOU 328 uh, soldering PCB vice to motorise the jaws and incorporate a programmable DC power supply. So thanks a lot for watching. If you like the video, please click the like button and think about subscribing.